Hola a todos. It's the Agostino Zynga Show. <laughs> Let's drop the Spanish there, but what's up, man? What's going on? It's the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episodio 363. Yeah, yeah, 363. How's going on? How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing, good to hear. How am I, you know, hanging on in there as per usual. If it's your first time listening or watching to the show, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five-star review and share that show with your friends. And if, if you want to support this podcast via Patreon, which you're more than welcome to, please click the link down below. Patreon.com, forward slash Agostino for as little as $1 or the equivalent of £1.20 per month. You can get access to my entire audio library of podcasts as well as this podcast in full HD audio via Patreon exclusively before anywhere else. Before it drops on Spotify and iTunes, you get on Patreon first. So click down below, patreon.com, forward slash Agostino Zynga, support the show, or sorry, forward slash Agostino, just one word, you'll see it in the pinned comment of the show, or you'll see it in the description of listening to the podcast. Support the show, support the show. Oh, how's it going, man? Top of the evening to you. Hope you guys are well wherever you are. Um, it is now the end of the week. Someday during the end of the week, I'm not going to date this, all right, or whatever. But I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing pretty fine. I've got myself through a pretty decent amount of this beer. And now I'm led, now I'm kind of at the bottom where you've got that kind of weird, manky, warm taste of a beer that's sort of like room temperature, um, which isn't good. But again, I'm British, so I'm used to drinking piss. Um, yeah, warm as piss beer or beer that looks like piss regardless i've drank worse so i'm going to drink it away so whether you have next to you or if it's a glass of water a little bottle of rum a flask full of crappy vodka or just your own saliva get a drink sit back and relax we've got a jam-packed show for you today loads of topics to talk about loads of things to cover me and you direct here we are let's go in straight no delay get going so story number one which is a really distressing one and something that you know you can't really make any jokes about but it's really an, an illuminating view into what's happening in america now at the moment um in you know around covid around the lockdown around the elections around orange man bad around the lack of enthusiasm around joe biden joe biden joe biden jesus imagine that that was a fact it's just a whole it's a complete shit show in america it seems like right um, it's completely burned into the ground and for the most part if you're just watching the democratic and republic and democratic and um yeah republic right is they called republic what do you call them republic whatever they're called um conventions the rnc and the dnc conventions you'd be somehow led to believe that everything's okay right that's the weird thing it depends again what you look at if you follow certain accounts if you're following andy andy no andy and go on Twitter, the, that guy that got um, milkshake back in the day and beaten up by Antifa. If you're following his account, America's burning, right? If you're following somebody else on there, I don't know. Um, let's I don't know, throw someone out there, right? Or if you're following, uh, who's the guy that loves Trump? Or just Trump in general. Everything is fine. Um, you know, the economy is going to come roaring back. Uh, employment is not low. You're sending out free checks. Just a complete mind fuck of a situation you're not really sure what's down and what's up but what we know for sure what happened over the weekend was quite distressing where this guy or this kid sorry a teenager called kyle rittenhouse decided to um leave his home travel 15 miles or 15 minutes um to another town in order to kind of stand up for the local businesses supposedly in wisconsin and then something else transpired he somehow got involved in altercation with antifa with some black lives matter protests we don't know he got involved in some kind of altercation which then resulted in him shooting three people and then killing two right i think the other one is still in, in a serious uh, condition in hospital but it's quite crazy to see the backlash and what the kind of response has been from people I'm a big fan of the Revenge of the Sith guys, even though I think they can they can be a little bit um, obtuse in some of their points. Um, I still enjoy the show. I think um, they do provide some comic relief. Um, and for people that kind of occupy the right-hand side of the political debate, I do kind of enjoy their perspective. But it was really interesting to see how divided they were when it came to um, judging this situation or giving their impression or their views on it. And I think for for the most part, was it Royce for the most part was saying that how he feels as if 
this situation that's happening in America now was going to come to a head eventually. Um, people were going to have enough of the reckless abandon that the politicians have left their states in and people were going to demand law and order. They were going to demand a return to civility, whether it required guns or violence, something was going to give. And I guess this was one of them, right? And then on Mersh's side, he was saying, which I kind of agree with, that you can't take it upon yourself to go and play vigilante, to go play Batman, to go and restore order. Mm -hmm. Because when the tables do turn or when eventually the situation does get worse or get even you know, within what it is, no one's going to be around to protect you. And then he also made a point about he feels like the cheerleaders online, the people who are kind of christening this Kyle dude, a, a hero won't be there for him when he eventually does get put into prison or gets a suspended sentence or has his life completely thrown away. They're not going to be there to support him and make sure that he's okay, which is a fairly accurate point too. But it's pretty easy, I think, from what's been told in the story so far to come to the conclusion that Kyle Rittenhouse should have been nowhere near where this protest was going. He purposely involved himself in the situation. This is no different to when we get annoyed when we see videos of Karens turning up to protest and blocking doors. And like that lady, remember the lady that put herself in harm's way on purpose? She was in like a mobility scooter and people were piling onto her, covering her in paint, spraying her with a fire extinguisher. And you kind of got the impression that she kind of wanted her five minutes and five, she wanted her five minutes of fame and she got it. She went to be viral. Um, nothing really came of that situation, but putting but purposely putting yourself in harm's way makes no sense, especially when a mob is banged for blood. Nobody is safe. We've seen many businesses go in flames in America that have signs of Black Lives Matter in solidarity, standing with you. And, you know, the, the quintessential one is the one in Wisconsin, right? The car lot that had the Black Lives Matter sign and the whole lot was on fire. It doesn't matter when people are in a frenzy, when people are angry, um, broke disillusioned they're going to act out in ways that don't make really much sense so for you to go there and put yourself in harm's way with a gun to try and res restore civility makes absolutely no sense especially for a teenager it doesn't make any sense whatsoever anyone that's encouraging it is an absolute idiot and again it's just unfortunate that this situation arised most likely he's not going to get charged for murder one i don't think that's a bit extreme i do think there's an element that he could be argued if you've got a really good lawyer they could definitely argue that he was defending himself because if you look at the video it did look like he was defending himself there was a mob chasing him and he was trying to get he was trying to go to help this was of course after he shot somebody in the head don't get me wrong but he was obviously trying to go and surrender himself to the police in order to kind of get help and to um make sure that he didn't get crushed by the boot of somebody's shoe um or by the sole of somebody's shoe sorry it's an article here from bbc it says car written house who is a ust and accused of the wisconsin protest murderers um after a black man was shot seven times in the back by a police officer in, in kenosha wisconsin on sunday the 23rd of august people angry about police uh, violence began protesting one of the on the third night of demonstration, a 17-year-old boy allegedly fired a protesters with a military-style semi-automatic rifle, killing two and still shooting the third. The the gun thing, I don't have really. Ever, that's the issue too. This semi-automatic rifle thing. I don't know how you judge in America. I'm not an American, but I would imagine if you are pro-gun, right? So if you're if if you allow people to bear arms, I don't see how you can then delineate between what is what is allowed to what you're allowed to own and what you're not allowed to own maybe there's a quantity of, of one something you're not allowed to own but this idea that they're kind of demonizing semi-automatic weapons as if this is the reason why people go crazy is nuts the kid is a nutcase the kid is obviously um have he has some kind of conviction that led him to go there but i don't think it's anything to do with a gun the gun wasn't talking to him so let's, let's just get that right on wednesday he was arrested at his mother's home in antioch at illinois how did he get home from shooting like him again this is weird he somehow he got home as well this is again this is the issue people have with all this stuff in america right supposedly we didn't we didn't see it allegedly the the, the um who, what's his name is it jacob kyle what's his name the guy that got shot um the black guy that got shot right allegedly he was trying to reach for a knife or a gun in his car don't get me wrong he shouldn't have gone back to his car after the police were trying to arrest him right you should obviously surrender yourself to the police and be as corruptive as you can right especially in america the consequences are just far too uh, bleak for you to do anything else but we didn't even see the knife or the gun that he supposedly had this guy was seeing him kind of running down the street with a semi-automatic semi -automa semi weapon sorry it's not some handgun you can't hide it under you know in your sock you can't hide it in your belt loop it's pretty obvious you've got a gun in your hand and somehow you got home and then you got arrested um 
A day later, he was charged with one count of first degree intentional homicide and one count of first degree reckless, reckless homicide. Videos indicate he was spent hours in Tuesday apparently helping patrol the streets. He told journalists that he was his job to guard the buildings and even offer medical assistance to protesters. Again, this is no different to Karens, man. This is like a gun Karen. This is no different. When you see those people that stand outside their door and they ask a, usually a minority person, hey, do you live here? I've never seen you around. Tell me who your house you're going up to. What's your door number? All this stupid policing of your neighbours, right? This kind of tittle-tattle, snitchy, looking out of your window blinds, calling people, making like... Th th this is basically what's led to this. And now you've got this kid who went to the extreme, of course. Uh, videos indicate he spent hours of Tuesday the day apparently helped patrol and um, here's what we know so far details are still emerging about Carl Rittenhouse but his social media profiles show a fascinating pro uh, fascination with police dating back several years no problem with that whatsoever I think again this demonization of the police is really strange uh, because you know if somebody God forbid in your family was to get raped who would you call the police so this idea that we don't need police and we could do away with them is ridiculous to say the least but there, obviously there is an issue, especially in America, with some kind of um, institutional racism. There has to be. There's no way that this kid could go home and the other guy couldn't even get something out of his car. It doesn't make any sense. Um, of course, both are in the wrong, but come on. A Facebook photo of him was framed with, black, with the Blue Lives Matter logo, a staunchly pro-police movement that often clashes with Black Lives Matter supporters. Again, whatever, he's 17, right? Um, you're going to... I don't know. When you're 17, I, I guess... I wouldn't have done it, but I understand if you're a teenager and you want to cause a reaction, you're going to wear a MAGA hat, you're going to be into Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, you're going to, you know, you're going to be a bit of a, you're going to be a bit of a cunt online. I can imagine that be the case. So you can't read in too much of that again. Several of his posts honor police officers killed on duty and he also posted pictures of himself wearing full police uniform. He is a former member of the local council, local police cadet program. Grayscale Police Department. Jesus, this kid really wanted to be a police officer, isn't it? Um, guns are another of his passion. First, sure, imposing with weapons. No problem with that. One that uh, charges brought against him is possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under eight. Okay, cool. That's I guess that's the issue because he's under eighteen. But I'm pretty sure in rural parts of America, kids kids know how to use guns they know how to drive like let's not kid ourselves right in an interview on tuesday night before the shootings he echoes the police language when telling a journalist why he's armed he says part of my job is also to protect people if someone's hurt i'm running into harm's way yeah all right mate um he's captured on video at different times during that night at one point he speaks to police who are from water later on he is shown being pursued pursued by a group of people one of whom appears to fire into the air the teenager turns to see where the sound is coming from as another person tries to attack him at one point a teenager appears to shoot the man and later identified as Joseph Ras uh, Rosenbaum. I think that was the white guy that was dropping the N-bombs, isn't it? That was a weird one because of course, now looking at the story, he obviously heard a gunshot, then he turned around and got kind of startled and assumed the guy that fired it was the dude with the bandana across his face, which it wasn't. So I guess that was the issue, the fact that he was getting attacked by somebody with a shopping bag or something. I don't know what he had in his hand and he decided to shoot them. That's insane, right? Again, I'm not sure if that's allowed in America. I'm not sure how, if that's how self-defense laws work. But if somebody, if you're allowed to shoot somebody because they charge at you with a shopping bag, that country is like about to burn to the ground. Uh, fleeing momentarily, he finds himself chased by a crowd before falling to the ground and firing his gun. One of those hit by the gunfire forced to the ground, fatally injured. He is later named as Anthony Hubbard. That's the guy with the skateboard, didn't it? I tried it. Again, don't try it. It's like what? Don't bring a knife, a spoon to a knife to a gunfight why are you hitting some guy with a skateboard that's got a gun in his hand insane insane and there's a part of me that thinks you know what right like okay people died right but can we really say honestly that the people that were tracking him were just going to beat him up do you think they would just left it at that i don't think so have you seen those videos of people getting booted in the head when they're just lying on a or i don't know like that guy that supposed that drove into a crowd he, his car crashes and some kid just boots him to the side of the face, um, you know, behind his back, sorry, and he's completely unconscious. We've seen, obviously, the other account of that, unfortunately, that African, the older African-American gentleman that got pushed to the ground and hit his head and died. Like, they're quite violent, right? These, this, this, I don't know if you call them, call them a file of whatever they are. They're not, a, they're not a peaceful group. So if they saw the gun and they got triggered from the gun, that we, it's safe to assume that when they were trying to, um, rush him on the floor that they weren't just going to kick him in the head and keep him moving they definitely were going to stomp him out until maybe he's you know his lights completely switched off so there is a part of me that's like you can't really charge somebody for murder if legitimately if that if that in that scenario i'm sure his lawyers could prove there's been other scenarios that kind of are similar where the person has you know been very close to getting beaten to death um and again just so unfortunate man like 
you go with your skateboard to a protest and suddenly you end up dead because you're just chasing some 17 year old with a semi-automatic weapon it's like god man another person runs away apparently injured many shots i heard during the incident yeah that's a guy that's got half his ha half his arm has essentially been blown off um according to the new york times a person who runs away injured is carrying a handgun he definitely was and cbs chicago quotes prosecutors are saying he injured the man appeared to have a handgun in his right hand when he was shot after the second shooting, Kyle Rittenhouse heads towards police vans with his arms in air. The bystander shouts, that dude just shot them, but the police vehicles pass by to attend the injured protesters. Who were the victims? Rosenberg, 36, was from Ken Kenosha, and Mr. Hubba, 26, was from Silver Lake. Again, RIP to those guys. Thoughts and feelings go out to their family and friends. <sighs> Such needless death, man. Needless. It's just horrendous, isn't it? Regard regardless of what the situation is, like, God almighty, especially in the midst of everything that's going on, everyone's got enough troubles everyone's going through enough as it is already to be dealing with a loss of a family member or a loved one due to a protest it's just oh yeah yeah they were on kenosha streets in a tense night that saw protesters clash with police and armed vigilantes demonstrators are angry about the police shooting uh, of a black man a black american weeks after the u.s was engulfed in a huge movement calling for an end of racism and police brutality jacob blake 29 was shot seven times in the back by officers his lawyer says it'll be a miracle if he walks again jesus christ limited law enforcement in kenosha has led to individuals and groups taking law into their own hands during the arrest a spokesman wisconsin police chief said so i wonder what that's about why is why is a limited police um presence during a full-blown riot when your city's burning why is that is that because the police are afraid of getting involved in, in conflict and causing more drama is it because they're understaffed is it because they've been told by the mayor and wherever it is to stand down like why wouldn't the police actually be trying to enforce law and order trying to keep keep some semblance of peace maybe trying to make some places no-go areas wherever it may be maybe try to um push their protesters to a certain certain area of kenosha where they can protest in peace and you know whatever keep them away from some of the other people on the other side it's really interesting i wonder if you're in america let me know like why aren't there police on the streets well like why shouldn't they try to like it's the complete opposite of what they did in new york in it when they were protesting there it was felt like there were police everywhere um what are the alleged shooters connection to Donald Trump? Why are they asking this again? This is again so insane. The suspect social media account suggests the support of President Donald Trump. Video show him cheering in front of a row of Ira Riley for the president's re-election. But who cares? It doesn't matter really, innit? This is just a heinous situation all in. Again, I won't read the whole thing. Let me know what your thoughts are below if you're in Ireland in America. Terrible situation for everybody involved, man. Like, ugh. I mean, honestly, I, just, I can't imagine what it is to go through something like this, especially in the midst of COVID and lockdown and the economy f essentially flatlining. Like, this is not what you need, man. But again, what do I know? Next on the list, uh, we've got <laughs> a funny story about Boris Johnson deciding to drop a couple of pounds which i'm i've got a lot of sympathy for him with um um we've all gone through the covid pounds i've put on a bit of covid pounds myself i'm shedding them now at the moment by going back to a gym that's reopened recently as of what two or three weeks ago that's been a blessing to have the gym to be able to go back there exercise sweat and get some of these covid pounds off but it's funny with boris because he's always been a bit of a beefy dude let's say and um uh with covid and the fact that you know um covid seems to affect people uh with pre-existing pre -existing conditions and people who suffer from obesity he really did need to set a good example right if you want to be the leader and you want to kind of steer this country into the right place and this is the way to go um again it's just funny because he always wears these shitty shorts right he's sort of like beach shorts he wears to go run you know he's always got these terrible polo tops on as well running he doesn't have any running gear at all which is really bizarre um and yeah man it's just interesting to see him kind of take this approach i guess he's trying to lead from the front and show people that hey i'm taking a step um to make these things better um in order to kind of set a good example for everybody else out there but again i don't know how um how this is going to resonate with people that aren't really fans of him anyway it's an article from the bbc it says the prime minister was admitted to hospital with the virus in april but says he has since been steadily building up his fitness mr jameson said his training is considered the mind as much as the body the coach also helped love island host laura whitmore train as a regular slot on bbc radio show amazing Boris Johnson has been trained by a Love Island personal trainer. You couldn't write that script. Johnson's time in intensive care thought to have prompted a change in views in tackling obesity. It didn't really make him change his view on, on COVID, though, did it, mate? Guy wants everyone to go back to the office. 
Looney. He was previously criticised um, levies on foods and high in salt, fat and sugar, and characterised his stance as libertarian. All right. I won't describe him as that. In July, he said that while he was not normally one for a nannying or bossing, the country didn't need to lose weight and protect from a second spike. He says, obesity is one of the real factor. I'm losing weight and frankly, it's one of the ways that we can reduce ourselves from the home risk from coronavirus. I'm, 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 I'm. As part of the drive to tackle the problem, the government said it would ban TV junk food adverts before 9pm. 9, 9 Again, who gives a shit? Like the, ugh, ugh. One on the personal level, Johnson um, has said he wanted to lose weight for ages, adding he struggled to keep it off. No worry, mate, we could tell. He said that since leaving hospital, he has lost at least a stone by going for a run with a dog. Um, he's one of those people that thinks if he walks, it's exercise, isn't it? All right, um, speaking to the BBC Fit and Fearless podcast parents as new trainer, Mr. Jameson said he seeks to help his clients in ways beyond pumping weights in the gym. Um, he says it's always been based on foundation of mind, body together and ultimately happiness. Oh, this guy, man. All right, mate. Get over yourself. But yeah, I guess it's good, isn't it? In some regard. Congratulations. Lose your weight. This is that Harry guy, I'm assuming, right? Imagine if Bryce ends up looking like that. Bloody hell, that'd be a turn out for the books, isn't it? Boris Johnson losing some weight. What a funny turn of events. Funny. Next on the list, we have this really interesting and bizarre campaign from the UK government to get office workers back into the office. Really strange. Now, give me some context. I've worked in areas near to Liverpool Street, right, which is an area in like the east central, east eastern central or whatever that postcode is of London, where most office blocks and places like... um co-working spaces such as we work are located and other co-working spaces out there no tie um most of the people that i know that work within my kind of sector or my area uh startups and all that sort of malarkey are usually situated in that area so is all the fintech com companies it's like a bustling sort of like our version of silicon valley so much so i think that whole area is referred to which extends maybe to old street is referred to as silicon roundabout which is really really gay but hey you get the point so um i guess with covid and people not being in the office because offices have closed and they don't want to keep people indoors for a prolonged period of time because they want to spread covid um a lot of businesses and a lot of startups um that aren't that that usually for the most part don't really look after the finances too well they don't really penny pinch they love to kind of um showcase this image of being a prosperous well-run company by having this high rise building that they kind of occupy the top floor of having you know friday night drinks all that malarkey they don't really give a shit really about the rent of their buildings but i guess if you don't have any sales and you aren't actually um being able to place ads in places and make your money back on whatever you're producing or the products you're serving or the service you provide you're obviously going to look at to cut some corners and save some money so the first place you're going to save some money is staff members of course hence people going on furlough people getting fired whatever it may be and then of course the secondly is going to be your rent and with the offices closing down and people you know reducing the capacity of where they're working i'm sure some businesses have been like you know what we don't actually need this glitchy office because we can do most of our work remotely we can have most of our executive c-suite team maybe meet up here and there during the week to kind of you know go through some things that they can't do remotely but for the most part most jobs in in office spaces especially within my kind of area marketing wherever it may be you can do it behind a laptop you don't need to be in situ with your colleagues to make that work the only reason why that kind of stuff really worked was mostly as a way in my experience from what i've seen again being an employee in these places they usually kind of had those spots so that they could impress investors that they could kind of uh, put out an image of uh, a successful company right if you've got an office that's situated somewhere within a trendy postcode in a really well-known building around all the you know brands that you know and love it's definitely going to um sway investors one way or the other when it comes to putting some money in your back pocket so now that's gone of course the infrastructure and the ecosystem around it around those offices has also suffered right whether it's people that had the food trucks i remember there was a food truck on the way to my office that I, I used to pass by a few times that sold some vegan delights um whether it's the couriers and then more importantly whether it's places like pret-a-manger eat and the like 
that are suffering no you know to no end right pret a are closing left right and center and again if you're not from london you won't know just how busy pret a is it's maybe one of the most busiest stores you could go to especially during a lunchtime in the office block everyone's going there to pick up their you know chicken and bacon uh roll uh maybe some toasty a sandwich or two whatever it may be it's your place to go to and for me in my opinion anyway i still think it's the best all-round sort of like high street coffee shop to go into it's pretty decent decent coffee and probably the best assortment of food but of course the suffering no one's in the office so no one's buying lunch there they've you know i've had I'm sure you've probably had the same thing if you live in the UK, you live in London. I've had an abundance of leaflets come through from Just Eat about um, Pret-a-Manger offering delivery, la 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 la. But who's going to order delivery or Pret-a-Manger at home? You can just make it yourself in your kitchen. It's not that great. It's only great when you're outdoors, isn't it, Jeremy? You know I mean? But you can't justify spending six pound on a toasty when you can just literally make it at home for less than a quid. So um, now the government are trying to encourage people to go out to the office in an effort to get people back into Pret because I'm assuming the people that have money invested into Pret also have some very dubious political connections so they're trying to make that influence known and it's just a bizarre state of affairs we were in a place where they were kind of encouraging people to work remotely in order to kind of keep the uh, virus um, under lockdown and kind of get some control so if we can return back to some kind of normality and now all of a sudden we've been told by the government that hey it's okay to come back to the office so that you can go and eat Pret and you could boost the economy like so article from um, sorry from BBC coronavirus campaign to encourage workers back to the office it says the following here um people will again be encouraged to go back to the workplace and the government ad campaign starting next week good luck if ever there was a time again i'm not one for it i hate people at work that are always complaining about being ill calling in sick all the time taking holidays <coughs> back to back and just not being dependable it's really annoying especially if you're working in a tight-knit team and you have a lot of things a lot of variables outside your control that change budgets and replies it's really difficult to get any work done when half of your team members are supposedly ill because they're gone the lash or they're on holiday again because they hate their job i know that but come on you cannot if ever there was a time to kind of act like a um like a sick note this will be the time as if you'd go back to the office as if as if employees will be asked to reassure staff Employers should reach to a staff that is safe to return to highlight measures taken to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, as if you're going to listen to your bosses. Uh, business leaders have um, warned of damage being done to city centres as people stay away from offices. And Transport Secretary Grant Shapps said some things were impossible to do remotely. Like what, mate? Like what? Tell me. Like fax? Send an email? I mean, sorry, send a fax? Photocopy something? I could do without it. Just buy a flipping photocopy from, from Amazon for 30 quid or go to your local internet cafe. But Health Secretary Matt Hancock said he cared more about how employees performed than where they were working. Yeah, all right, Matt. Um, ministers in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are still advising people to work from home if possible. <laughs> the campaign which will launch at most schools as most schools in England and Wales reopen will predominantly be prompted through regional media. So I'm assuming because they're getting people back, because they want to get kids back into school, they're hoping that they can persuade some of those parents or those kids to go back to the office because they're not, they're on their, they're home alone anyway. So why not go back to the office? I guess that's what they're trying to argue, but that's not, no way. People don't understand how much people's decisions in life have been changed permanently due to COVID. Forget even moved away from city centres, which has been happening, you know, for a while now. People are going to uh, rural towns or just living outside the city. That's going to be a permanent shift. But people's attitudes towards what they accept day to day in terms of going to the office, in terms of being in a crowded room with people, it's going to change forever. There's going to be a certain group of people that are still going to be okay with that. But people's attitudes have changed. So to somehow, to somehow think you can convince people now without a virus, without a vaccine right and without one on the horizon that to go back to the office is really ambitious it continues it says meanwhile nine in ten uk employees who have had uh, who have uh, who have worked from home during lockdown would like to continue to in, in some form which is true duh according to a survey again the only people that will miss working from office are the same people that are kind of working from office is similar then it, like, it's got the same kind of, yeah, I think it's similar to like um, the argument for going to university, right? University for the most part is pretty useless, right? University education is pretty, over, not useless, it's overpriced, right? It's not, there's no value for money in the education that you're getting, especially considering the free resources that are out there at the moment. So 
the argument for university is that it's actually better for your development your development as an adult right your yeah your development as an adult um in terms of how you um conduct yourself around new people um make friends all that good stuff that you you can't really quantify that's what university does do for you especially if you live away from home it's really good at making you grow up quickly even for myself i even though i lived at home i still got a lot of uh I still got a lot from going to university, hanging out with my university friends for the best part of, you know, a day every week. Um, that was really a lot. So I can imagine office doing the same thing, right? Seeing your colleagues, being able to share laughs and jokes, um, getting immediate responses by going over to the table. I'm sure you're missing with some things, but generally in terms of doing your actual job, you can do it anywhere. You really can. Um, the research by academics in Cardiff and, started, and Southampton universities, which involved thousands of people between April and June, suggests the majority of people working from home um, are as productive, if not more. Of course, because there is a part of you that thinks, you know, you're getting, you're, you're being allowed to work from home. It's a bit of a privilege, so you're not going to take the piss out of it, for the most part. Some people, you know, are still going to take the piss and not do the work, especially if they don't like what they're doing or like what they work with. But for the most part, most sensible people will actually get on with it. Um, Whitehall sources insist the campaign will not suggest those who continue to work from home are at any risk of losing their jobs. <laughs> Labour shadow business, or oh, hopefully, you, I mean, yeah, Lewis, uh, Lucy Powell sorry, said no one should be forced to choose between their health and their job and the government should categorically rule out any campaign. But they're doing it anyway. The Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon said she does not want PT people intimidated into returning to workplaces. She said her government had been holding talks with businesses, leaders and possibility of the phased return to offices work, but it was still too soon for people to go back but you can't the government can't mandate this this is just something that has to be done when the time is right via each company right when when the virus is under control and start things start to open up and we start to kind of um we start to gather in large groups right in different places whether they're clubs or bars or just in general in the street right in shopping centers like even shopping malls aren't that busy right like westfield shopping center is flipping empty both i've been to both the one in White City, anyone in Stratford, there's hardly anyone in there. It's not how it used to be. And again, if you've been to any shopping malls, especially the ones in, again, White City and Stratford, you know how busy they can get during the week or especially during the weekends. They're completely empty. So people are just not ready to go out in that regard anymore at the moment. If things open up again, fair enough, but you can't, because the government can't mandate you to go back to work. That's up to the, that's up to your employer to decide, hey, now maybe it's a time for everyone to come back to work. We want to go to a new shift, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. But this is really bizarre um da, 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 da. uh francis o'grady general secretary of the trade union congress said the prime minister needs to a credible plan uh to help more people travel to work safely and not scare campaign the messages come as head teachers said that they're already um they are ready for young people to welcome young people back to school in england wales in the full time next week which should make a return to workplace more feasible for many parents i guess because they're not going to be at home uh, ghost towns the employers organization that the cib has warned city centers could become ghost towns if the prime minister does not do some more to encourage stuff back uh go this is a funny thing most of these city centers don't have any businesses that are not most of them are populated by businesses that are definitely not local businesses they're not mom and pop stores right they're these big corporate chains that are suffering god almighty this is terrible isn't it um some prominent conservative ministers shared these concerns and urged ministers to deliver a clear message that is safe to return to work if it's if it i think you could argue until the ministers go back to the house of the commons and start doing that hey hey stuff that shitty stuff they do right then no one should go back to work you could easily argue that until those guys stand butt to butt right shouting in their you know in that weird tone then no one should go back to work but yeah, let me know what you think, man. I'm not reading the whole thing. But yeah, should people go back to work? Are you afraid of going back to work? Do you want to go back to your office? Or are you hell-bent on working from home like most of us? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, next on the list. What else we have to talk about now? Ba, 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 ba. Okay, yeah, it's interesting. Let's go with this one. Let's go here. So, um, this is an interesting topic to talk about, right? Mm. As you're aware, there's a lot of hoopla within the dance music scene concerning DJs playing during these complicated times that we're living in, aka COVID times, right? They've now been dubbed the plague raves, but there's been a, a conversation, a wide-ranging conversation around 
what this kind of represents, right? Where some of the more higher ranking DJs, some of the DJs that kind of occupy the higher echelons of the um, DJing success and, you know, frequencies of gigs and all that good stuff. They're the ones who are now going around, gallivanting around the globe, playing to sold out crowds of maybe max 500 people in countries that are deemed safe and maybe COVID free. And they've now been referred to quite mockingly as the business techno group. And for the most part, I don't really have a problem with some of the stick and the and the kind of barbs they've been getting because I'm of the thinking, again, this is my personal opinion coming from somebody that's a really novice, middle of the road DJ who kind of only plays in local bars and clubs, who's obsessed with nightlife. And, you know, I've kind of, I've been to the Bergheim more times than I can kind of count or remember. Um, I'm a staunch believer in the beauty and the magic of nightlife right some of the my best experiences in life have come after 9 p.m for the most part so i'm in love with that scene and i'm missing raving more than anything in the world but i've kind of been a firm believer from the very onset that everyone is sort of we all have the information to hand now to make very informed rational adult decisions as to how we approach um, life and how we maneuver and go around doing stuff with COVID in the air, right? Um, vaccines and cures aren't going to be around until maybe the new year. So we have to kind of rationalize how we're going to go about navigating, living our everyday lives, knowing that this virus exists around us. And one of the things I've chosen not to do is to DJ anywhere. Of course, I'm not being offered any gigs, don't get me wrong. And I've also decided not to go to any parties. That's my personal decision. But I'm also really annoyed when people who decide to do those two things then get annoyed when people call them out and say stuff. Because I think you should be aware enough, especially with the current climate, especially you should be more um, compassionate of people's feelings. Because every, not not myself, because I could give a shit, you know, it is what it is. We're living in this weird situation. I just kind of try and carry on. But I can understand some people who have generally not gone through any kind of turmoil, any struggle in their lives at whatsoever, especially any struggle that wasn't their own making. So some might be put in a situation where they've lost any kind of process of making any money, all the future, all the gigs that they were going to do at the time, especially between the months of like March and April, that were probably a bit lucrative concerning, especially that was during like the peak or the uh, the start of kind of festival season. I'm sure a lot of those people have seen their bank accounts or their savings completely diminish over that time. So to see somebody who they deem to be a peer or somebody who they deem to be a little bit more financially safe go and do these smaller gigs, especially when the original argument was that, um, or the optimistic point of view that we had in the scene was that, oh, now that COVID is around and there's going to be restricted travel, there's going to be an onus on local promoters to book local DJs. I said that as well on this podcast. I thought that was going to be a thing. It's going to be a great to see um, um, a clubbing landscape that maybe reflected its geography as opposed to going to every random town that you go to you're going to see a bloody you know top 10 dj playing it's, it gets a bit boring i like to hear what the scene and what the sound is of that area um via the lens of the people that actually live and work within that actual city that's what we thought was going to happen but unfortunately it hasn't been that hasn't transpired what's actually transpired is that because covid is around in here and promoters have lost loads of money they don't want to take any risks so the moment they get a chance to put on an event they're going to want to book somebody that's going to guarantee selling them tickets and unfortunately because of the cyclical nature where every gig every festival they usually book the same 10 to 20 people when things go down and the economy is hurting and you need to guarantee ticket sales you're going to do what book the same 10 20 people so if anything these djs are uh, gallivanting around are emblematic of the situation at hand they kind of represent the um i wouldn't say unfairness but the the just the it doesn't make any sense in it in some regard that's what maybe you could say in sense because in my opinion again it's just my opinion right because as being a dj myself dj more than 10 years i generally think that there's no real difference between the DJing skills, again, not get me wrong about tickets to girls, ticket sales. I don't think there's any much difference between the DJing skills of people that are at the top and people at the middle. Of course, the entry level people, the people like myself, I'm sure if I played back to back with a flipping Chris Liebling, you'd be able to tell when Chris is playing for sure. But I think the middle of the tier people and the upper tier, they're, they're the same. They're two and the same. But the disparity in pay, the disparity in gigs is 
wide even between those people so i can only imagine what it must be for the people from the bottom to the middle so when they see these guys gallivanting around it's definitely going to bring up some frustrating feelings right and thinking you know what i'm i really need these gigs i should be getting those gigs and i'm not getting them and you don't need them even though you shouldn't count someone's pocket and you don't know what they're going through it just really stinks isn't it? and kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth and the funny thing is about this video i'm about to show you via this uh show called djs and the beers that chris liebling does with a few of his friends in the scene is that chris liebling says in the beginning that he feels comfortable in the fact that he's able to go out and do these gigs he looks himself in the mirror and he's okay with decision making but he's very defensive of this entire podcast concerning anything um concerning the naysayers and the criticisms or the haters online especially that business techno page on twitter he really has a beanie's bonnet about them calling him out and that's the issue at hand i think if you're willing to take the gig you have to be willing to take the criticism now it's not it's not up to it's up to you whether you respond or not but you can't dissuade people from criticism because again i don't i'm not criticizing him i could give a shit right it's not my issue go play many gigs as you want spread the virus do what you want to do if anything it's probably going to hurt us in the long run right clubs probably not going to open again maybe for another year maybe until the beginning of next year i think in that regard depending on what country you're in but if you want to take them take them but you can't then turn around and get angry and people try and call you out on it because you know where the frustration is coming from. You can't be that obtuse. It doesn't make any sense. And let me play a little, little clip from you regarding some of Chris Lieben's comments that really just doesn't make any sense. Again, for somebody that's um, supposedly comfortable with his decision and okay to look himself in the mirror, he seems oddly, oddly, oddly defensive. Let's play. Actually, I told him that. Ah, <laughs> Benny, you, you also... True story. story. Wait, wait, yeah, guys, I have to stop you here. I'm sorry, but I, I have to be the party pooper. I need to get back to the pandemic DJ thing for one more yeah. time. <laughs> we, we, we cannot, yes, what we about you? <laughs> Guys, I, I, haven't, I haven't voiced my opinion yet, and I need to. Um, I have played three gigs so far in this pandemic. And honestly, I can look in the mirror and I would play them right away again. So what are my circumstances under which I, uh, I accept the booking? Um, I told myself it needs to be... Um, under like the least amount of restrictions possible, right? So I've, I've refused to pay parties where they say like it's in a, a, a movie theater with four cars. So honorable, right? That's a really honorable stance to take. I'm not gonna do them with cars playing. It's like, come on, geezer. You know, or people have to sit down or people have only their circle they can dance in. There is an argument that that's probably a lot safer than the gig that he's played that. There is an argument to be had about that as well. Because this will not work. It will not be a good party. It will not be a good experience. I don't want to be part of that. No matter, no matter what, what the price, no matter what. It's, it's just like, I didn't want to do this. Oh, so tell, tell, I, his eyes, tell, are, I, his I, eyes I, are dying around no matter the price of the money. Yeah, right, mate. Again, it's not bad thing. Earn your money. Do your thing. No one... No one's under any sort of illusion that Chris Lieberman doesn't make good money playing, right? He's a big DJ. Like, I, when did I go? I saw him last at some Shoreditch car park years ago, maybe in the early 2000s. I forgot what that car park thing was. Maybe I've maybe last time I've seen him. He's obviously, you know, he does well what he's doing, and I'm sure he makes a good living. But to suggest that it's not about the money is really, really nuts. I told myself I'm going to accept parties, uh, offers, where I A, know the promoter who's doing a good job, um i which is a bit of a mute point because you're obviously gonna know the promoter right people at his level aren't gonna be working with just any tom dick and harry so that's a bit of a redundant point certain countries where you can uh, trust the numbers of the government that's also ridiculous because what do you trust the numbers of russia do you trust the numbers of brazil do you trust their numbers <laughs> like do you trust the numbers of hungary like that's just nuts like of course like this suggestion that some again I'm not, I don't care. Go do your gigs. It's just really interesting how somehow the people that are pro opening everything up and going back to normal are just so devoid of any kind of foresight, insight, acknowledgement of the actual wider issues that are at hand. Is he not aware that there are certain governments out there that are purposely fobbing the numbers, right? Purposely misleading the public, withholding, even Brazil. I'm, I'm sure, didn't I read a story? Or is it Brazil or some? It's even Brazil or maybe it's a state in America, it might be Florida, where they're purposely um, withholding the numbers of coronavirus cases. Even in the US recently, they've now changed how they categorize cases of COVID, where they're now instructing people to only take a test if you feel ill. So they're not going to be able to catch asymptomatic people who they think is going to boost the numbers. Or so it's going to make help to kind of decrease the numbers somewhat. So to somehow, um put all your to somehow kind of push responsibility away from you and place it all in the hands of the country you're going to and say hey they said it's safe so it's okay is demonstrably 
demonstrably, demonstrably, demonstrably irresponsible. Because you don't know what's actually going on, especially when you hear stories on the ground from actual journalists who are telling you that, no, it's actually fucked up the situation here. And the government are trying to restart the economy, of course, to benefit themselves and to line their pockets. It's not to help anybody else but the people that are actually putting on the events themselves. So to suggest somehow that the numbers from the government are always going to be legit is absolutely crazy. When it comes to infections rates, where are the infection rates? Obviously, it needs to be legal. So uh, I played two of those three gigs were in Switzerland. And in hindsight, these were amazing gigs. They were restricted only of the amount of people that were allowed to come. Um, but otherwise, everything was traced back. So if in case if there had been an infection, which there wasn't, it could have been traced back. This is why I think that illegal parties during the pandemic is the most idiotic thing. But do you think he's purposely being a little bit obtuse about this issue? Because no one's complaining, I don't think, about the parties in Zurich. We know the numbers in Switzerland have been pretty well, have been pretty good. It's the same way if they decided to go on a, if DJs, if there was a popular club in New Zealand that people could get to easily and everyone decided to go there, no one would have a problem because we all are aware that New Zealand have probably crushed the virus better than anybody, right? Same with, same could be said for places like Vietnam. And I'm sure there's other places too that have handled it pretty well. That's not the issue. The issue is that for the most part, what we've seen is that there's people that are purposely going to areas which have had, which have been affected by COVID in the worst way, places like Italy and other sorts of, and even Malta, where you could argue that the government is purposely misleading the public as to what the numbers are in the hope of re, uh, in the hope of opening up the borders, in the hope of restarting the economy, welcoming them back tourists so they can restart the economy. But is it safe? Is it the first thing that needs to be opened up? Is that a crucial part of the economy of that country? Is that one of the industries that really needs to kickstart in order to get people's lives back and running? We don't know. In my opinion, I think it's a bit of a luxury. Going out, having a good time is a right of anybody else's. But to go and see a high-flying DJ play somewhere isn't a requirement for anybody, right? You're, you isn't one of those fundamental needs that you must have to go and see Chris Liebing. And again, this is part of the issue. Again, I have of it. It's odd. It's the same 10, 20 people that play at all these festivals that are going to go play. It's not even like you're breaking your quarantine to go and see somebody amazing. You're going to go see somebody that's going to be in your country at like maybe six or seven times, especially if you live in a fairly popular European country, right? Tourism wise, you're definitely going to see him again. It's not the first time you're going to see him. And maybe, again, and Zurich is a good example. It's a bad example because, you know, seeing something like Chris Lee being in a 300 capacity club is probably a bit of a special occasion. But for the most part, it's like, come on, man. Thing to do, right? Um, I played one gig in Rome, which was perfectly t fine at the time as they did the gig. Ah, at the time they did the gig, huh? Hmm. Terrace, um, it was restricted on the amount of people. Um, and it was perfectly fine to play there. No, so me, again, you see his eyes always dart around when he's lying. Were the people wearing masks? Did you feel safe when you were there? No. I was able And if you remember in the beginning, he said in hindsight, th those two kicks in Zurich were the best, but the Rome one, he's sure that wasn't a good idea to go to. Like, okay, if, 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 if it's like this, I can, I'm, I'm happy. The flying experience was not a nice experience, but I'm happy to play these gigs because out of various reasons because a, a i think we need to start to play some gig, or, or let's say i'm feeling like i want to start to play some gigs where it's somewhat safe because life needs to go on in in certain safe areas where the infection rates are low which is perfectly fine in switzerland which life does need to go on but there's a rule there's again it's really strange like, maybe it's just me but am i the only person that doesn't just i love djing i love dance music but i listen to everything right I'm into indie, I'm into hip hop, I'm into metal, I'm into punk music, right? Um, I've not seen any of these those guys put on shows. There's not been one um, underground DIY metal show I've seen of a, one of the bands that I like to follow. I've not seen one. I've not seen one indie person play a gig somewhere randomly and just do a pop up show. It's just these guys that are kind of, you know, tying themselves in knots as to why they should go and play somewhere. Again, if you want to go play, go and play. But don't expect people to accept and be happy that you're playing and cheer you on. Some people are going to be a bit pissed off about it, but it's okay. Go and play. Be happy with the decision. But they're trying to convince us that they're doing nothing wrong or that we shouldn't view it as wrong. Not us. People that don't like what they're doing. And it's like, it's a very interesting thing. And again, this is the guy that said he's happy looking himself in the mirror. And he'd do it again. He's really, really defensive. Which we can see. Um... The funny thing is with all the DJs that are criticizing other DJs right now who are playing somewhere, I'm actually agreeing with them, like on most topics. I the only thing I don't agree on is why do you uh, uh, paint it with such a broad brush, you know? It's like, 
if it's not if it's not possible to play a gig in the USA, why do you play a gig in Switzerland? Well, because it's completely different. They had a completely different approach towards I don't, the virus. I don't think anyone's saying that, though. Let's just be honest. I don't think anyone's saying that whatsoever. I just think people are saying it's irresponsible to be flying around. Again, if you live in America and you're going to go play a gig in Zurich, <coughs> that's not an essential travel. If you're landlocked in Germany, wherever he is, and you're going to go play in Zurich, fair enough. But... Let's not be under any illusions. Like going to fly halfway around the world to go and play a gig somewhere in order to get the economy back up and running again is it's just like I don't know, man. You 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 you're, you're trying to convince yourself, but we know that's not the fact. They did a whole better job, uh, and uh, it is somewhat safe to play to to play a gig. I don't I I, I don't really like the way how things are being generalized in, in a way you know it's i like, think i, I don't think i basically saying i don't like the way i'm being judged i don't like the way people are calling me out and playing the gig when it's not the issue go and play your gig enjoy yourself man play this play your set do your thing in it and go back home and you know be happy that you've made a bit of money during these hard times but to some i suggest it's anything but that is bizarre it's really bizarre really really odd it's you because play. a lot of these people like to control the net they like to dictate the narrative and control the narrative yeah well i think yeah, that gives, if, gives them a feeling of empowerment it's like i i want to control by what i say I, uh you know where I, you where this guy's talking out of his ass mate dubfire i love you mate you make some good tunes don't get me wrong but come on relax again I, I'm all for people going to play gigs. Do what you want to do. I don't want to go out anywhere, but do what you want to do. But to suggest that people are trying to control a narrative is nuts. If anything, the DJs going to playing are trying to control a narrative by putting out certain pieces of information, being purposely obtuse. And, and you know what's funny about this issue? You know what the actual issue is? is you know what's actually been happening? That actually makes it really funny. If the DJ, if DJs want so, especially these kind of top ten, top twenty mix, not mix mag, but these kind of like business techno guys, if they weren't so obsessed with their image and putting everything on social media and constructing this 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 idea, this impression that they're bigger than what they are or whatever it may be, right? They're all about how it looks on Instagram and getting likes and all that stuff, malaki. If they weren't so obsessed with it, it wouldn't be such an issue because these same people that document their entire tour and they put up all their dates and they show off and where they're going to go play, they're now getting bitten in the ass because they're unable to go and play somewhere especially when they haven't played in four months and not post it so they're just making a rod from their own back if they could just go and play not say a word and just do their thing and keep it moving no one would care yes you would see some images from people that upload videos and stuff but it wouldn't be that much of an issue but because they're so desperate to let everybody know of the success that they have and how big they are and where they're going to play it's now coming to bite them in the ass poetic justice mate it's so funny you can play or not you know I you know i, I don't i don't want to assume that i don't know i don't want to assume i don't guys you can turn it off you, you can, can turn, turn it off, off. Any... yeah you could definitely turn it off if you close your eyes racism doesn't exist you could just turn it off mate like this uh, radio slave jesus christ brother Point. you can get a studio make some music and turn off all of that chat all that noise you, you, you don't you... Again, mute point. We just might, might as well skip what he's saying. But then the next one, I think, in that, the other point, I think, is this further on, on 45. Let's see what he made. There, there is a, it's, it's, it's but there is another, you know, there is another little point in, in, we are now, we are now like six, seven months into this pandemic. And we know a little bit more about the virus than we did in back in March. You know, when it started back in March, uh, it, it might as well could have happened that a week later, half of the world population would have died because the virus is so heavy so uh, so i was the first one who say like stay inside lock down you know and by now we know a little bit of brave the virus. we know infection rates of different areas of different countries so i do believe that people really want to gather where humans are people who want to party you want to get together and if we don't people really want to go see chris liebling play again for what the millionth time the same set says like come on man let's <laughs> Oh, I love the guy as well, but come on, man. What are you talking about, brother? Really? Like, again, this is, this is, so, it's very interesting how they view, like, this is very illuminating to view, to kind of hear how they kind of view their craft. Because for, in me and my, in my experience, being a club kid, having the ability to play for a crowd is like one of the best hobbies you could ever have or privilege, right? To maybe make a career out of that would be flipping amazing, but it would be so amazing. It's still kind of, I, I still have that kind of idea of being a fan, right? Somehow I'm that guy that was buying records at Fonica and now suddenly I'm playing at Bergheim and Paramba. I'll be like, wow, this is insane, right? I was that guy that was trolling YouTube, trying to record dig, like 
okay, amazing. Go and see my favorite DJs go and play. Like, and now suddenly I'm on a big stage of a festival. That would be so sick. But I'll still view myself as a kind of, as a fan first playing for other fans, right? Just be psyched to be there. I don't know what happens when you suddenly make the switch and you become this person. You be, you sound like an executive because this sounds like, this doesn't even sound, because it's interesting because they're all artists, right? But they all sound like, um they sound like they're people that might have been in an agency or in a management group or like a record label. It's very businessy orientated. There's no like understanding of the emotion, of the feeling, of the vibe, of the ambiance, of the kind of, um, of the vibe of the room. There's no reading of the room. It's all kind of like this weird sort of convoluted idea that somehow they have a moral duty to go and play and restart the economy. It's like, are you insane? People's houses are burning. Businesses are flipping, getting looted. And you think DJing is the thing that's going to restart the economy. That's going to get people back up where they need to go, right? It's going to put food on the plates of their children. It's going to keep a roof over their head. Really? really? Especially you guys, right? Not even the people on the ground level who might say, hey, we're starting a, a, an underground illegal party somewhere where the proceeds are going to this local charity. I know it's illegal, but we've got this really cool, altruistic kind of like holistic view and kind of idea and go on the end of it. No, you're just playing for yourself which is good, which is fair, do your thing, capitalism and all that malarkey, pocketing the money and flying back. That it's, there's, there's nothing to be gained from that whatsoever as a community as a, uh, or as a country. And, and, and for, for most examples, especially in Italy, you're actually going there when it seems to be okay and then leaving a trail of destruction as you leave. But then you have nothing else to, you know, you're not going to go back there again until it opens up again, but you've left a trail of destruction that you have no idea what kind of spike that you've caused at that time. It's just insane. I really will wonder what happens. I guess you just become so successful that you kind of are a bit detached from what happens with the people in the scene in, in general but it definitely goes to show there's definitely a disconnect between the top 20 top 50 djs and actually everybody else at large it's because they just they just they don't even sound like they understand what's going on there's no i don't know it's just very very strange slowly under controlled circumstances legally in areas where it's possible like just listen to my words in areas where it's possible like switzerland defensive allow parties people will do illegal parties and illegal parties is the worst that could happen right oh yeah definitely illegal parties is, is, is definitely worse than what you're doing 100 percent, mate let's not try and um let's not try and um what you call it uh rave shame people everything is bad illegal is bad um legal legal quote unquote is bad we don't have a vaccine we don't even know what's happening with this virus there's still reports coming out of everlasting um psychological and physiological damage that comes to people that have still recovered from it i read a story about this woman that hasn't even got a sense of smell back still so to somehow suggest that oh the parties are going to save the world. It's really ridiculous. It kind of reminds you of the designers are like, oh, design's going to save the world. Yeah, tr really, mate. A bench is going to save the world. What are you talking about? This is absolute nonsense. If you're going to play your gig, go and play a gig and be happy. Go back home. Mute your Instagram or whatever it may be. Delete it from your phone for a week. Jump back on there and keep it moving. But to somehow suggest that everyone that's, that's kind of criticizing you has got it wrong and they need to see it your way. No, they don't. They don't, right? Most of the people that are talking about it haven't played in months. They've lost their money. They've they started a label in March. They've somehow not got a label now in bloody September. I understand, like you can definitely understand why they'd be annoyed. It's not even that hard to even kind of fathom. But for some reason, Chris Liebling is talking himself into circles and he's not really made any kind of coherent point. Again, it's really interesting. I'll leave the link down below to you to read, listen to the entire thing. But it's a very interesting um discussion again i like djs and beers i've watched quite a few of the shows but it, as it's gone on you've definitely seen the the um, you've definitely seen the issue people have with business techno in the terms of how they kind of look at the clubbing landscape it's definitely all business no love for the most part or again maybe it's because they've been in the game for 20 plus years it's hard to still be a quote-unquote backpack fan but i still have that love i'm sure most of the people that kind of are fans of it like i am will had the same thing too so it's very strange to see these guys be so disconnected with the kind of plight of everyone else is going through this situation at the time but again maybe i'm wrong let me know in the comments below do you think Chris Liebling's wiling? Am I wiling? Um, should we do like Radio Slave and just delete everything and close our eyes, mate? Because if you close your eyes, it's not going to happen. And make music. What do you reckon? Let me know what we should do. Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay. Um... <laughs>
I think that might be it, you know? Yeah, I think that might be it. I think that might be it for now. And I'll come back on the other side of everyone. But yeah, that's been the Action Zing Show episode number 363. Thanks so much for tuning in as per usual. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time listening to the show, please make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five-star review and share the show with your friends. If you want to support the show via Patreon, please do be the link below. Click the link below to support the show via Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Agostino. That's Patreon.com forward slash Agostino. I'll see you guys again very very soon take care be safe peace